Hey there, Fletch Maltings Overlanding here, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about whether you should or shouldn't go camping slash dispersed camping slash overlanding on a holiday weekend. So at the time that I'm dropping this, it's right after July 4th. If you went camping this weekend, post up in the comments down below and let me know how that went for you. But in this episode of the podcast slash vlog, I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of my experiences with camping on holiday weekends and whether I think you should or shouldn't. Now, again, this is gonna be my opinion. It's also based on my location and kind of where I am. So lots and lots of opinions here, and I'd love to hear from all you guys whether you agree or disagree down below. Or if you're on the podcast, hop over to my other social channels and join the conversation there. But let's get into should you or should you not go camping or overlanding on holiday weekends. All right, guys, so as I mentioned in the intro today, I'm talking about whether you should or shouldn't go camping on holiday weekends. So we are just now through the 4th of July. I'm going to kind of break this episode up into a few sections, and I'm going to put chapters on this on YouTube. So if you want to jump around, you can do that. But I'm going to give you guys, I always like to give you up front sort of an idea of what to expect in the episode, right? So I'm going to break this out into three sections. The first one is going to be crowds, right? I'm going to talk a little bit about what the crowds are like, what my experience has been with crowds. Is it super busy? Is it not? What kind of crowds are they? What type of people do I typically see out on holiday weekends? That kind of thing. Um, second, I'm going to talk about behavior. So, you know, are there rowdy people? Is it calm? Is it, you know, what is it like when there are holiday weekends? What can you expect? Again, based on my experience, what have I seen? And then third, finding spots. How hard is it, right? I know that's a question that I see quite a bit in like my newbie Overlanders Facebook group. There's a link to that down in the description below where people are like, hey, it's July 4th weekend. Do you think I'm gonna get a spot in XYZ National Forest or State Park or whatever if I go out this weekend? So we'll talk a little bit about that towards the end. So again, let's get started with the first sort of piece of this episode, which is the crowds, right? So as you would expect, as is common sense, uh, of course, on holiday weekends, typically it's going to be more busy, right? Especially for me anyways, I'm located in the Midwest. I'm in Indiana. Hoosier National Forest is where I go quite a bit. That's my stomping grounds. So my experience has mostly been with that or like places in Wisconsin, Michigan, some Kentucky stuff, a little tiny bit of Illinois stuff. Uh, there's just not as much dispersed over there. And most of my experience has been with dispersed camping, but I've also done some state park camping and stuff where you have reserved spots and you pay, right? So let's start by talking about the crowds and I'll start with the uh, sort of easier access state park type thing, right? So the last time that I actually went to a state park was a few years ago and it was around Halloween. So it was a different holiday, right? But it was, they literally had like special events at the state park. And it was actually really cool. My kids were a little younger then. So we were looking for something. They had like a haunted trail that you could walk on. They had like some games and stuff that were gonna be played in the campgrounds. And so we were like, this will be cool. And we had some other friends that weren't quite as into camping as I am um, that wanted to bring just like a minivan in there, like a ground tent, right? So they were like, we were like, let's do a state park. Let's not do dispersed. We need toilets. We need this kind of stuff. Let's do it around Halloween. It'll be neat. It'll be spooky. It's fall. So it's cooler. We don't have to worry about the temps or anything like that. Um, but it also wasn't winter. So it's like a good middle ground for, you know, non-campers to come and enjoy. So we went to um, Mounds State Park, I believe is where we went that year. And again, the campground itself was great. Like the state park folks are great. I don't want to like talk down on state parks. I just personally, my kind of why I go camping is to get away from people, right? I don't want to go to a campground where I'm surrounded by people's barking dogs and running generators and kids screaming and drunk people hollering at night, right? Like that's, that's what I go to get away from. So my experience with state parks and like reserved spot camping is not great. I just don't love it. Here in Indiana, most of those campgrounds, again, anytime from like, you know, February, March, when it starts to warm up and become spring to like October, even November sometimes, is pretty busy, especially around the holidays. And there's quite a bit in the way of crowds. Even if the campground isn't super full, almost never is it empty, right? So like you could still have a very high likelihood of some rowdy teenagers, you know, getting drunk and, and throwing fireworks or something like that, or, um, you know, kids, screaming because they can't sleep or don't want to go to sleep or dogs barking or you're, you're going to have a lot of that with state parks. So just again, if you're brand new to this, if you've never done this before and you're like, I'm thinking about going to my state park for 
you know, my local state park for camp out on July 4th or Memorial Day or anything like that, just be ready for some crowds. Now, if you're gonna do dispersed camping, a lot of the same things apply. Now, you're gonna be a little bit more spread out. That's what I like about dispersed camping, right? So even if there are people out there, you may hear some guns shooting or you may hear fireworks going off or you may hear loud music and stuff like that, but at least you're not right on top of each other, right? So dispersed is definitely better around the holidays than state park camping, in my opinion and my experience. Um, but you're still going to have crowds and that's still going to, you know, maybe cause some problems for you when you go out dispersed camping, especially if you're driving from far away. And again, towards the end, I'm going to talk about finding spots and kind of what that's like and what my experience has been with that. But so that kind of ties into this, but we'll get into that in a little bit more detail towards the end of this episode. All right. So next behavior. Unfortunately, what I've seen a lot in both state parks and dispersed camping is that around the holidays, I feel like it's, and again, I'm not trying to disparage anyone, but I feel like it's a lot of locals. So folks that are local to the area that are like, hey, I'm not really a camper. I'm going to drag my my 30 foot RV out here with me and we're going to go camping for a weekend or four days or whatever over this holiday weekend because it's cheap or free or whatever. And then they cause a mess and they may have loud music and they may have, you know, parties going on and they just may not be the most respectful to those dispersed spots. Kind of the same with state parks, right? Like at least there, there are some like DNR people. There are, a, there's a little bit of moderation, I guess. Uh, but those still get pretty crazy. You can still hear big loud parties and stuff. The crowds uh, are big. And then their behavior typically around the holidays is they want to let loose, right? They want to go out there um, and have a good time, which usually involves alcohol or, you know, partying a little bit too much. And again, being less than respectful of your neighbors. Now, again, I tie that into locals a lot because a lot of people say things like, well, these overlanders are sharing all these spots or they're, you know, the local national forest is overwhelmed with overlanders and it's because of them that this stuff is terrible. I, in my experience, have never seen an overlander go out and trash a place. I've never seen an overlander do that kind of thing. It's almost always locals because they kind of view it as their own backyard. Like, where I'm going with this too is like, you'll find things like a tire or an entire tent left behind. Like an overlander is not gonna leave their stuff. They're not gonna bring trash out into the woods to leave in the campsite with them. As a matter of fact, what I typically will do, and this you could consider this kind of like a tip, is I'll avoid the holiday weekend at all costs because I don't wanna be around people, number one. Like that's why I go out, right? And then number two, I know that right after the holiday is typically pretty slow. So, you know, they're going to book up through that holiday, but then you don't generally have a lot of traffic after the holiday ends and people take off. There's usually like a week long lull where there's just not a lot of people out there. So what I typically try and do is like, you know, again, July 4th was Thursday. Now it's Sunday. Like maybe like if I can, I'll sneak out for like a weeknight quick getaway overnighter. But I'll go out there with a couple trash bags and my literal plan is to kind of go around and hit a few spots and clean up because I know it's going to be a mess and these poor, you know, forestry service folks are trying their best but they're spread thin. So my kind of goal is I will typically try and wrap a like a July 4th trip in like five to six days after July 4th when the holiday is over and the people have gone and then I'll go out there with a plan to sort of pick up, clean up, feel a little bit better about my impact on the national forest and trying to, you know, clean that place up. And then I'll enjoy myself. I'll have a beer or two and I'll, or six, and I'll smoke a cigar and I'll sit around and I'll read a book and I'll relax and I'll be, you know, there'll be far less people out there. So, you know, unfortunately the behavior typically around the holidays is worse, but then I try and turn that into an opportunity not to toot my own horn, but just to say, like, I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Like, view, like, the weekend after a holiday as a good opportunity to go out, help out, clean up, pick it, pick up some trash, you know, pack out more than you packed in and just help clean that stuff up and then take advantage of it, right? So that's kind of my strategy is to go around the holiday, but not right on the holiday and to clean up the stuff and then just stay. So then third, talking about finding spots, right? That is a tough one. Now with a state park, of course, you have to make reservations. So if they're booked up, you're going to know that. You generally have to, with a state park, in my experience, book, especially for a holiday weekend, at least three to six months out, right? So you want to be looking at that site way ahead of time. If you know you want to go camping on the July 4th holiday weekend, you need to be looking at that ahead of time. You need to get your reservations in because the state parks will book up. The good thing about that, though, is you know that, right? Like you're not going to go out there when it's all booked up and be like, can I please have a site? because you know there's not going to be any. Um, with dispersed camping, it's first come, first serve, right? So 
So that's the tough thing is finding a spot when you're dispersed camping, especially again, if you're driving from far away, me going to Hoosier National Forest is about a two hour one way drive. So there have been times where I've driven all the way down there close to a holiday, especially where was one time when I had my wife and kids with me, we drove all the way down to Hoosier National and we looked for a spot for probably an hour and a half or two hours. And I literally was like, we're going to have to drive home. Like everything is full. And then I just happened to find one that was not a really good spot, but at least it was a spot, um, you know, right at like the entrance to the sort of one of the parts of the National Forest. And we just took it because we're like, you know what, at least it's a spot. Let's get out. Let's set up. Let's have a fire. Let's, you know, eat our hot dogs that we brought and enjoy ourselves. Let the kids run around in the woods a little bit. And, uh, and then we'll have a good time, right? But so we just barely found a spot. I... So for the record, in the last five or six, seven years of doing this, I've never not gotten a spot. I have definitely gotten less than desirable spots. I've gotten bad spots. I've gotten spots that are like on the outskirts or just people don't want them, you know, and that's why you get that spot. So again, I've never gone dispersed camping in Hoosier National Forest here in Indiana and not gotten a spot. So just take that with a grain of salt. Again, that's going to be very location dependent. There's uh, there was when I went to Georgia one time, we did uh, Jack's Falls river or something. I think we were near something like, I think it was called Jack's Falls River or something like that. And it was literally really nicely defined dispersed spots. And there were three rigs. We had three rigs and we're driving through here and every single spot is full. We get all the way to the end of this dispersed section. And we're like on the radios and we're like, should we just go home? Like we were like 10 hours from home. So we were like, we need to camp tonight. We're exhausted. Um, And so we were looking for stuff. And then as we're driving back out, thinking we need to go somewhere else and find a spot, we happened upon one that that had just been vacated. It's like literally we drove by and they were there. And then when we came back, they had left and all their stuff was gone. And we pulled right in there and we took that spot. So we got super lucky there. So it can vary, right? It does depend on where you are. There are some state parks, national forests that will book up and just every single spot will get taken. Now, again, for me, luckily in Hoosier National, it's pretty spread out. There's a ton of dispersed. It's just you have to look around and, and kind of explore. And it's a very large national forest. So typically you can find a spot. Um, but so be aware of that, right? It is going to be challenging there. It is going to be tougher to find a spot, uh, much harder than it typically would be. So again, holiday weekends, in my opinion, to kind of put a final wrap up on this, I try and avoid, as I mentioned, I try and avoid holiday weekends. If you're going to book for like a, a state park, book far in advance, just so that you don't have to worry about whether you're going to have a spot or not, or whether you're going to be able to have, or whether you're going to have to change all your plans, right? Because you can't get a spot two weeks out. Um, so book in advance if you're going to a state park or a private campground. If you're going dispersed camping, try and get out there a little bit early. Like maybe like go on a Thursday instead of a Friday, let's say. Let's say that July 4th was a Friday. If you go out on a Wednesday or a Thursday, if you can stretch that in your schedule and get out like a day before the holiday, you might be able to sneak in and get some better spots than you would if you just showed up when the holiday starts, which is when most people go. Most people are going to go right just over the weekend, Friday to Sunday. So if you can get out there Thursday uh, and maybe skip a Friday, take a Friday off work, then you can get some really good spots even on a holiday weekend. Now, again, you're going to have a lot of people and stuff. So in my opinion... I try and avoid those weekends. I try and go around them, not during them. But what do you guys think, right? I want to hear from you guys. If you're on YouTube, post up in the comments down below. Have you had problems with it? Have you had really bad experiences? Have you had loud music and generators and all that stuff running? Have you had good experiences? Have you had the opposite of me? Uh, I I kind of think, I feel like most people have probably had bad experiences around the holidays, especially with dispersed camping, because you're literally like trying to get away. So anyways, post up in the comments down below if you're on YouTube. Like I mentioned, if you are on the podcast, There's Facebook, there's the Newbie Overlanders group, there's tons of stuff, all that's linked in the description down below. Hop over and join the conversation over there. Um, But that'll kind of do it for this episode. I hope that, again, if you are, especially if you are newer or you're thinking about this or you're like, I want to go, but I don't know if the holidays are a good time to go or not. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was and you're on YouTube, hit that like button. If you're on the podcast, uh, leave a five-star review if you're enjoying the content. That helps a ton. It shows other people that, you know, that it's a good podcast. So I would appreciate that a ton. Add it to your favorites so that you don't miss any episodes. As I mentioned in the description below are links to all my social channels, the Newbie Overlanders Facebook group. There's also a link to my website where I've got funny overlanding camping themed patches and stickers. So if you're into that kind of stuff, check that out. I think they're pretty funny. They're dad jokes like don't burn your wiener and it's a hot dog, that kind of thing. Um, there's also a join button below this if you're on YouTube. That's just a passive way to support the channel and also get you early access to the podcast episodes as well as all the other videos that I do about gear and do-it-yourself modifications. And I'm a Nissan guy, so there's some Nissan content on there too. Um, so check Check that out. 
Then there's also a link to my Patreon group where we've got a 24 seven Discord. We all kind of chat all the time. We do a once a month Zoom call and we're doing a couple of trips every year. So if you wanna do a more active way to support the channel and be involved with all things Overlanding, that may be a good option for you there. Um, but again, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to talk to you guys in the comments and we'll see you next week.